Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're excited to be back in Sunday school again and to call upon the, the, the Lord. That's, that's how we'll begin. And uh, let's do that right now. Our Father, which art in heaven, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We just praise you. We worship you, Father. And as we come on this Palm Sunday, we're so grateful for what you did 2,000 years ago, Heavenly Father, over 2,000 years now. Uh, and, and Father, as we look forward to this coming week and celebrate Holy Week, dear God, as many people call it, we celebrate what you have done for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word today. And I ask, Holy Spirit, please teach us, open up our minds and hearts that we might receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. A life of victory. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I like to I like to win. How about y'all? <laughs> yeah, in, in fact, all of us do, don't we? Uh, some of us uh, poor losers. As a matter of fact, we love to win so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I am. Uh, I watched the uh, national championship game. Part of it. And the team I was pulling for, I was pulling for the Big 12. Uh, I, I was pulling for Kansas. And they got behind 15 points. And I said, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to go look at uh, I, I, I was watching uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin <laughs> on PBS. <laughs> I think I'll just flip over to Ben Franklin. They're they going to get blown away. <laughs> And then I came back and checked with about three minutes to go in the game. And I said, wow, man, look at them. <laughs> they got a chance to win this bad boy. And boy, they were busting those threes and what have you. And came back and, and won. In fact, I've been, I said, man, I want to watch. I wish I had watched. I wish I had DVR'd it because I'd like to watch this whole game now <laughs> and see how they came back. And the next day I went on YouTube. To see if it was the whole game was on there because a lot of times they it, it will be saints. Uh, uh, I used to watch OU games that way, especially if there's one where we won, like when we beat Texas, Pastor. And uh, uh, I, uh, I I could go back on YouTube and watch it as often as even without DVR in it. Well, you know what? There's something we don't have to DVR. <laughs> there's a victory that took place two thousand years ago. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looked like defeat, but it was not defeat. And, and in fact, he, there's some warnings that he's going to give them that's in our text today. Amen. Yeah, yeah, because it was a difficult time, uh, This what they were going through at this particular time. So let's, we're going to look at John 16, 19 through 22, and 27 through 33. Uh, and what we will uh, be talking about is in Christ, we have victory over anything, anything. I said anything. The world throws at us. Amen. Isn't that good news? <laughs> no matter what the world throws at us, saints. And it, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a tendency to forget that and get caught up in my situation. But this is good news for us today because there's nothing that the world can throw at us that can separate us from the love of God and what he has in store for us. Amen. The victory is ours. We've already won. We're, we, we, uh, we, we have, uh, he, he declared that it was finished, that it was over. Amen. And, and, and so we can celebrate that, saints. So let's look at what the, the word has to say to us in John 16. Uh, and if somebody has their Bible, uh, I'd like for you to, somebody to read that text. I'd like for somebody to read that text for us. All of it. Go ahead and read all of it. And then we'll jump into the discussion. Thank you. 
Yeah, uh, no, 19 through 33. You, you got it, Brother Maury? Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. And how to vote. John 16. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I just knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto him, Do you inquire among yourself that, of that I said, A little while and you shall not see me again, and a little while you shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep in heaven, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in a travel, had sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she delivered of the child, she remembered no more of the anguish or the joy that a man was born into the world. And you know, therefore, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no, no man take it from you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be fulfilled. That these, these things that I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you lately, plainly of the Father. At that day he shall ask in my name, and I say, may say unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loved you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speaketh no proverbs. Now ye, now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man shall ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, it is now come, that you shall be scattered, and every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but of be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Saints, I'm going to do some. I'm going to I'm going to read that same text. Uh, but uh, I last last week, one of the things I asked you to do, I ask you to do a couple of things. Those of you who were interested in participating in our Christmas play next week, <laughs> Easter. Yeah. What? <laughs> y'all y'all forgive me <laughs> yeah the 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 easter play next week and uh th these are the participants that will be in the easter play sister verilyn is going to be mary magdalene amen amen jocelyn is going to be the other mary the angel of the Lord is Maury. A keeper, the keeper at the sepulcher. Nobody but the pastor volunteered for that one. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. And I know he's gonna he's gonna do it up. Amen. And then uh, my my son David, amen, uh, has has consented to be Jesus, said he would be Jesus. So I look forward to your study over the next week. And what you're going to do is you, you're going to be speaking in the first person. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to use your spiritual imagination as long as it's consistent with scripture. <laughs> Amen. In other words, it doesn't have to just be in this text. Because, you know, if I'm the angel of the Lord, that, there's a lot of different places where the angel spoke in different places in the Bible. And, 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 uh, you know, for example, uh, and, and this is a hint, uh, <laughs> in, in, uh, in, in Psalm 8, he said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? It's all right if the angel of the Lord 
even though it's not in our particular text next week, makes a statement like that. Y'all follow me? Yeah. And, and y'all remember what those brothers did the last time we had it? They, man, they were, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they put that, that, that standard way up here. Amen. And I know y'all going to do a great job as well as we look forward to that word that, that you're going to bring as, as, as you present that to us. And what I'll do is I'll be the narrator and I'll just call for each one of you. Uh, at particular times to uh, uh, to to do your to, to talk in the first person about what you saw on that day and what you experienced, what you felt. Amen. Look forward to it. It's going to be a great day in the Lord. Next Easter, not Christmas. We're not going to wait till Christmas. We're, we'll do it next Sunday, Easter Sunday. <laughs> all right, all right. Now the other thing I ask you to do, and all of us can do this, and this is what I'm about to do. Uh, for our text today. One of the greatest things that I've learned from Dr. Hendricks is to paraphrase the scripture in my own words. I, I'm not saying copy it out of the New Living Bible or something like that, or another paraphrased Bible. For me to look at that text and then to paraphrase it. And I wanted to give you an example of it because I would encourage all of us to do that next week as we look at that 28th chapter of, of, of Matthew, verses 1 through 10. And I want you to, th this, is, this is how I paraphrase this scripture that, that, that Audrey just read. Uh, so I'm going to, and I'm going to do it. 16 through 33. I, I just did all the verses. I didn't, didn't skip any. Uh, John 16. Very soon, you won't see me any longer. And before you know it, and you will see me again. His disciples were discussing among themselves what Jesus said to them. A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me because I am going to the Father. They were wondering what Jesus meant by that statement. The, the disciples did not understand what Jesus meant. Jesus could tell they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you're asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me and again a little while and you will see me? It is so, it is so. I say to you, you will be crying and mourning my death, but the world will rejoice and throw a party after my death. You will be distressed over my death, but your great pain will turn into a state of keen pleasure and delight. Let me illustrate. Remember when your wife gave birth to a child, she was in pain and sorrow because the hour of her giving birth had come. But when the baby was born into the world, there was great joy and the sorrow was forgotten. Right now you have sorrow. But when I see you in a few days, your heart will rejoice and no one in this world will be able to take your joy from you. When that day comes, you will ask nothing of me. Amen, amen. Whatever you ask of my father in my name, he will give it to you. To date, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask in my name and you will receive. What's more, you will be filled with joy. The things I have said to you, I spoke in parables. The time is coming when I will speak to you clearly about the Father. In that day, you will ask the Father directly in my name. I will not ask the Father for you. The Father loves you. Because you have loved me and have believed in me, and I came from that I came from God. I come from the Father, but I am leaving soon to return to the Father. The disciples responded together by saying, Now you are speaking plainly and not speaking in parables. Now we know you know all things. We no longer need to question. We know you came from God. Jesus asked them, do you now believe? Soon, in fact, the time has come. You will be dispersed 
and will leave me alone. However, I am not alone. The Father is with me. I have said these things because I want you to have peace. Make no mistake about it. You will have grievous trouble in the world. But be assured, I have prevailed over the cosmos. Amen. Amen. I hope you can see how that can help your own personal understanding for you to take. It's going to take a little while to do that. <laughs> All right. But it is well worth that exercise. Amen. And it, it certainly helps your understanding of the text. So I challenge you to do that next week. You sit down, get you a pencil and paper. And in your own words, you paraphrase what the scripture is saying in Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, today. And, and I'm doing, I, you know, I've, I've got a Bible study on Mondays on Ruth. I'm enjoying doing that, man, because I'm paraphrasing everything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But again, it's got to be consistent with what the word of God says. I'm not going to say something in what I paraphrase that's inconsistent with the word of God. Well, let's look at John 16. And, and see what the Lord has to say to us. You know, one of the, before we go to John, let me remind you of a scripture. You might make note of it. Uh, Hebrews 4 and 15 tells us about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what Hebrews 4 and 15 says is that he's high, our high priest. Now, the reason I want to bring that uh, scripture to mind is because what it what that scripture goes on to say is that he sympathizes with us. He can feel our pain. He knows our weaknesses. Yeah. Amen. Uh, because he was tempted in all points. In fact, even greater than we are tempted. So he can relate to us. And when we look at our text today, and the Bible says of, of God that he is the God of all comfort and certainly his Jesus is also the God of all comfort. He sees his disciples. They're struggling with the things that, he's that he has told them. Remember, this, this takes place in that upper room. It begins in the upper room. And, and Jesus, uh, he's keeping it real. <laughs> he's telling them some things that hurt them to their heart. They couldn't believe it. In fact, it was hard for them to focus. And we see that in our, our text today. He made he some things he told them very clearly and plainly. And man, it just went right over their head. And they were distressed. They were in great distress. And as I told you last week, all of us have been there. Any loved one that you've had, especially if it over time it they you, you knew that they were they were about to leave here. It's it's a stressful time on you and, and that's and that's the way it was for the disciples. They didn't understand it. In fact, they had were getting to the point where they were feeling hopeless. Have you ever felt hopeless? Amen. Uh, Proverbs 13 and 12 has a word for us there. And and what Proverbs 13 and 12 says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Amen. Yeah. Uh, because we can do almost anything if we have some hope. You don't want to be like me and just give up on them because they're 15 points behind. <laughs> you may be 15 points behind in your life, but you can have hope. Amen. Amen. Because, because we got the winner on our side. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The one that has won the victory. Uh, that's why God spoke to Jeremiah, scripture that we love to read all the time. And, and he's prophesying to Judah and he's telling them uh, about uh, what's about to happen and that they're going to go into bondage and it's going to be for 70 years. And because of the way that Jeremiah was being treated by uh, the nation of Judah and the people there, I mean, he was he was being persecuted big time. We talked about persecution last week. 
And Jeremiah was down and out too. I mean, he's not the weeping prophet and he had some reasons to weep because I mean, they were, they were mean to him. And that's why our Lord said, not only to, to Judah, he's speaking to Judah, but he's speaking to Jeremiah also. And a scripture we love to quote, don't we? That I know the plans I have for you. Plans for your welfare and not calamity. To give you a future and guess what? A hope. A hope. Amen. Yeah. Again, no matter what's happening in our life, we can have that hope. And I hope and I pray that as we go through this lesson, you, you see that as a powerful truth. Um, so the Lord knows his disciples are distraught. And he's continues to talk to them. Uh, and and even, even though he had told them, and this was a lesson a, few, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said, don't be troubled. John 14, right? Let not your heart be troubled. You just stop being troubled about this. But hey, they they weren't they weren't listening to that. Uh, uh, and 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 if you look in the first, uh, in the sixth verse of this six in the sixteenth chapter, it says that their hearts were filled with sorrow. Amen. Yeah, they they were going through a lot of sorrow, uh, and. They were ignoring what Jesus had to say. And yet Jesus is continuing to talk to them. And what he's going to do is he wants to turn their sorrow into joy. And so he's going to prophesy some things. And that's where we'll begin uh, as we look at it. And I want you to help me talk back to me. And, and what predictions uh, did, did Jesus make in verse 16? All right. All right. Brother Al, I don't know if y'all could hear him, but as he said, Jesus predicted that they would not see him anymore. But did he stop there? What else did he predict? Amen. And then in a little while, you're going to see me uh, uh, again. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Look at Jesus, saints. This I, I marvel at this, and I know he's he's God Almighty, but he's human as well, just like we're flesh and blood. And instead of him looking at himself, his mind is constantly on his disciples and what he can do to comfort them. That takes great strength to do that, saints, when you're going through some suffering. In fact, Paul talks to us in Philippians, doesn't he? And Paul tells us in uh, Philippians, in that second chapter, that we're not to look to our own selves. But look at, look at the situation that other people are in and their struggles and their suffering. Uh, I love that uh, about my brother Otis and what he says, all the things that he's going through right now and how often he... Mm. What, what he does when he goes to the hospital and he sees somebody else is suffering. He doesn't have his mind glued on him and everything that he's going on. He'll go over and he'll, he'll pray with somebody else. He'll give an encouraging word to somebody else. Saints, that's the way it ought to be. <laughs> Amen. God bless him. And I know God is blessing him uh, because of that, because he's fulfilling that scripture. His mind, his, his mind is on others. And that's the way Jesus was when he's talking to his disciples. Um, and so what does he mean when he's saying, you won't see me and then you'll see me again? All right. All right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Last year. And, and, and Verlin let us off. He's talking about the crucifixion. For, he's going to go through that. And, and he's going to be buried, right? Right. He's going to be in the tomb. Mm -hmm. Amen. But soon after that, amen, after three days, amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Song we used to sing all the time from Andre Crouch, he'll rise, he'll rise again. Amen. 
which he did, mm -hmm. which he did. So, so that was the prediction. Let's look at verse 17 now, because they were perplexed in spite of the prediction that he made. And he explained himself. Um, they were perplexed. And what were the disciples perplexed about? Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Amen. What does he mean that he that he's leaving them? You know. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's this all about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the last thing they expected is him for him to leave. Right. What were their expectations? Oh. Amen. We came. <laughs> right. Yeah. At that time, right? Yeah. And the suffering that they were going through with Rome. That, that's why just a few days ago, they were arguing among themselves. No, I want to be on the right hand. I want to be on the left hand. That's right. Because they, 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 they just knew everything was everything. And he was about to take over. Amen. Yeah. He was, they were seeing in the natural. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Woo! Now, we, let's not be too hard on them. Right. No, I know. Because <laughs> uh, how many of us, all of us, I dare say, something happens in our life and we look at things through the mm -hmm. natural, Amen. not the supernatural. Amen. 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 There's, there's a difference. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> but why did they ask Jesus the questions that were going through their mind and, and that they, they were discussing with one another about what? Why do you suppose that they didn't want to ask him? Scared. Afraid of the answer? Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, I, yeah. hey that, that, that's good interpretation. They were scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, he, he, go, he might get on me. Hey, man. Anytime somebody asks him a question, you know, he comes back with, with another. Everybody was scared to say anything. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 They remember what he just said to Thomas when Thomas said, "Where are you going?" <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they they saw how what he did with with Peter when Peter said, "Oh no, Lord, I'm with you always. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. I forbid that." Amen. And and Jesus. He, he, he rebuked him. Amen. Yeah. So what does omniscient mean? What does omniscient mean? All knowing. Amen. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and yet he's very compassionate with them. Amen. Amen. He's, he's still very, uh, so what does Jesus offer them to help them to understand? And you have to look back up at verses 20 and 21 if you've got your Bibles open. What does he offer them to help them to understand? That the fire is going to turn into joy, you know, after they go, you know, it's going to be sorrowful right now. But later on, he said it's going to turn into joy, you know, so... He uh, uh, compared that with the woman having a baby, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, how she's in great pain, but then after that baby is born, you know, she's, you know, just, just happy she can do. So, uh, so that's what he was saying, you know, you and Christ and, uh, and be sorrowful, but, you know, it, it, it'll turn around, you know, you'll see. You know. All right. And they, probably, and they still probably don't understand. Right, right, know. right. Uh, yeah. But he was just giving them hope. Mm, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. He was giving them hope. And and yet Jesus was keeping it real, wasn't he? Now, how was he keeping it real? There's going to be some pain. Mm, my Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
if, if some of us are out there witnesses, witnessing the people and telling them that your trouble is going to be gone when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, quit lying to folk. Amen. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, y'all, when I say that. Because, in fact, you know, amen, you're going to get some trouble <laughs> that you hadn't anticipated in your life. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, it's going to be painful. Uh, and and this is going to happen, Jesus is saying. There's, there's no question about it. There's no, no question about it. Uh, and uh, what is ironic about the marvelous statement uh, Jesus makes at the end of verse 20? What's ironic about that? Woo! Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. That's good, saints. I, I don't know if those of you that are on Zoom can hear that. But the very thing that's making them sorrowful right now mm. is going to give them joy. Mm. Now, is that ironic or what? Amen. Now, what are you going through right now? Don't answer out loud. I want you to answer that out loud. Uh, I, I just want you to think about that because all of us go through things in our life. What are, what are you going through right now? He can take that and turn that into joy, saints. Amen. Uh, because because the, the cross is bringing, that's going to bring the grief to them is also going to lead mm. to their joy. Amen. And can y'all, you know, I, I love Christian hymns. Amen. And a, a, a lot of our hymns, there are many hymns that take the pain of the cross and turn it into joy. Can, can anybody, I, I got some choir members here that's in front of me right now. At the cross. At the cross. Amen. Yeah. Mm. What, right. what, Oh, rugged cross. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just an emblem of suffering and shame, right? But I'm going to clean. What? Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can anybody think of anything else? Amen. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the blood. Down at the cross. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know it was the blood. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That and, and we get great hope uh, from those hymns and the reason we should never leave those hymns, a man behind us. Uh, what is the one word that describes the joy of the disciples that Jesus is talking about? What, what's one word that comes to your mind? It's not in your text necessarily. But I want you to come up with the word to describe the joy that Jesus says that they're going to have. What would you say? Say it again, sis. Everlasting. Everlasting means what? Mm -hmm. Woo! Man. So no matter what you're going through right now, there's a joy. And, 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 and we sing it all the time. Do we believe it? The world didn't what? Give it to me. And guess what? Can't take it away. <laughs> Amen. There's nothing that they can do. I, I marvel yeah. when I listen to uh, uh, people, that, you know, it was on 60 Minutes last week, and that, that went through the uh, uh, World War II, the Jewish people, and the thing that, that they could keep in mind, and it continued to give them joy. Amen. Because they they could see that they were gonna they were gonna rise above the situation that they were in one day, and they had that hope and that prayer. That's the way that we ought to be, also, amen. amen. No matter what we're going through, and so he's making he's gonna make a promise to them. What does in my name mean? Mm -hmm. Agreement. Is it magic? Is that why we say it at the end of our prayers? So what does in my name mean to us as believers? 
this is important to us because I, I, yeah, I don't believe in just, see, sometimes Christians use that. And, and then I'm thinking about what they're saying in my name, in his name, in his name, in his name. Consistent it's, with who he is. A name is describes the, the who you are. And so consistent. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's after his will. Amen. Yeah. It, it's not my will. And, and so that's why we can't go with the health wealth folk. And just because I want a Mercedes. <laughs> because that's, that's not, because Jesus don't talk about anything that you want in this. It, it's about what you need, right? Mm. <laughs> Amen. And, and also it's according to his will. My thinking is not, the, it, it's not Bill's flesh that ought to be at work. Mm. I want to think like Jesus thinks. Amen. Yeah. And we can do it because we have his word, saints. Uh, and so no matter what circumstance that we're in, uh, uh, he can, he can help us. He will help us. That's a promise. Uh, and so he's saying that, guess what? You ought to rejoice. You ought to rejoice. Amen. No matter what the circumstances are. And, uh, what, what were the disciples unclear on, uh, uh, why were they unclear on a lot of things that Jesus said? He was speaking figuratively. Good, good. Amen. Right, right. Yeah. Even though he gave an excellent illustration about a woman giving birth to a child, which I can't relate to because I've never given birth. Amen. He's not speaking in public. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, because he was speaking in veil language. It, it wasn't a full explanation. Here's another problem. The reason they had it and the reason we struggle with it. Y'all ready? I, I'm not trying to insult any of us. And this includes me. We can be awfully thick headed. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And also, we can be reluctant to believe what he said. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because they had, and, and, and here's, a, here's another thing. Sometimes we buy into bad teaching. Mm. Amen. That, that's some things that, uh, you, you know, if I ask, the, I've asked you this before and you've answered it appropriately. What does it say in the Bible? You take two steps. And he'll take three. You take one step and he'll take two. Amen. That, that's not the Bible. Amen. Sometimes we'll buy into stuff. Amen. That we that we shouldn't buy into. That's what's so important about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He's throughout this chapter, he's continuing to talk about the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of us misunderstand the job of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I want to make a point here that I was proud of Bethlehem when I when we gave the survey to them of the things they wanted to learn most about. Number one, and, 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 and it, in fact, it tied, was, was Bible study and prayer. But you know what number three was? I want to have a better understanding of the Holy Spirit. And that is so true. Because for years, and, 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 and I'm, I'm about to critique some of our teaching, amen, Somebody get up and, whoa, man, he, he got the Holy Spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit. Just because you have emotion, that don't have nothing to do with it. Now, I, I know I just messed up some some of the teaching that some of them had for you. Man, she, she's full of, no, you know what full of the Holy Spirit is? Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, amen, goodness, kindness, amen. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you into his word. You, you, you're helping other people. You have hope, amen, beyond all hope, because that's where the Holy Spirit is going to lead you, amen. And Jesus is teaching them these things as, as he's on his way to the cross, saints, amen, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and he acknowledges something that's, that's great, doesn't he? Uh, uh, because he talks about... Uh, 
who they are, right? And and the fact that God is going to is, is going to when they ask in His name, and he, they don't they don't He's not asking for them, right? Who, who's asking? They're asking themselves. The Catholics have it wrong, saints. Amen. Yes, I want my pastor to pray for me, but you know what's more important? You can pray for yourself. Amen. Yeah, yeah, amen. It, Hebrews, there you go. We, all of us, can come boldly. Amen. In fact, he, he wants us to ask, seek, and knock. Us individuals. Yes, we ought to pray for one another. Amen. The Bible talks about that. But but there's great authority that we have because it's in Jesus' name. And 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 uh, why why did he say they have that privilege? Why do you have that privilege? Why did he say that to his disciples? Look at verses 25 through 27. They can, they can now speak it in Jesus' name because, you know, once he goes, he goes back to the Father. He's with them all the whole time. And, and now, but in fact, he's with them. He's with them, but guess what? I'm going to send you some help. The Amen. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to send you. We're not here by ourselves, saints. Once you're saved, Come here, uh, Romans 8, read it. Because if you don't have the spirit, you're none of his. Amen. The spirit is in you. It dwells within you. You have that power. Amen. Uh, in, in, in the name of Jesus. But also what he points out, my father loves you. And why does my father love you? Amen. Please. They believe in him. They, and that he came from God. Amen. That's very important, saints. Very important. Because how were you saved? By faith. Somebody, I heard by faith, he died on the cross. And you believe that, right? Not only do you believe he died on the cross, you believe what else? Amen. <laughs> yeah, he was resurrected. Come here, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen. It's that simple. Amen. It is. And, 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 and yet Jesus keeps it real with them. Now, how does he keep it real? How does he keep it real? What does he say about them? What, what's about to happen? They're going to suffer. <laughs> They're going to suffer. In fact, y'all about to y'all about to leave me. <laughs> y'all about to get on the run. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the word here, scatter, amen, yeah, uh, you, you, you're about to scatter, you, you're about to go someplace else, amen, but because you believe, amen, in other words, what Jesus is saying, and I'm so glad about this thing, I'm so glad that Bill does not have to live the perfect life, amen. that, that when, once I have received Jesus as my savior, he is, his blood covers me, and even my weak faith, just like he was telling these disciples, your weak faith, and because you have, uh, yes, you believe in God, you you believe that He sent me, uh, and 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 uh, you you believe that He's my Father, and so God loves you. He can take my weakness, Amen, and it can become strength, saints. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because and and so that's. Let's, let's conclude with this. There are a couple of things that we want to conclude with. What will bring you peace? What will bring you peace? Mm -hmm. What can we learn from this? Yeah. To know that he's overcome the world is what I heard one of the saints to say here. What, we have the victory. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And, and does it make you feel good? You know, you know, some some people, I, Maury and I were talking about this before Sunday school. Some people have a poor image of God because they had a bad father. 
and they think that God is like their father. God is not like their father. God loves you. Oh, saints. I, I, now, that's when the emotion should have hit. And, and it, what will you say? The Holy Spirit should have got all over you, right? <laughs> because hallelujah. Amen. He loves me. And you know what? What, what? what blows me away, makes me cry often. He knows me. He knows my weaknesses. He mm. knows how I blow it. And yet he loves me anyway. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, that you have that love for me. And 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 uh, another and reason I that say, if I can say too that love is so personal. It's oh, so it personal. is absolutely. So it is. It's so kind. It is, and that's why you want to get in His Word because you know what? He has a rhema word for us. Amen. There are things that He wants to say to us individually that He may not say to somebody else. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's good for you at that time. Uh, and and uh, we have we have we we have peace because we have faith in God, Amen. Um, and and it is Jesus' words that give us hope. Uh, and and so uh, he said, I'm, "I'm overcoming it all." Yeah. yeah, yeah, because his victory is our victory, Amen. His victory is our victory. There is hope. We win, y'all. We win. We win. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, I uh, trust that all of us will apply what we have learned in uh, John 16. And let's look forward to next week. Amen. We've got five guest teachers. Amen. 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 Because Jesus lives. And guess what? And you can too. Amen. As we look together at Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. May God bless you is my prayer. Let's close in prayer, as a matter of fact. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we have hope. Thank you that we've already won. In fact, you said in Ephesians 1 that we're seated in the heavenlies with you right now. We believe your word. We trust you, dear God, that no matter what circumstances that we face in life. But, but, but what you said in your word also is that the reason that we love you is because we obey you. So, so Heavenly Father, help us to obey you and, and, and to apply your word to our lives. Bless us as we go forward in this day, dear God, as we hear your word, as your word preached today and, and, and taught. And again, Heavenly Father, help us to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chapter 11, 5 through 7, 14 through 15, and 43 through 44. Uh, two slides. Let's read this together out loud at the same time on three. One, two, three. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. When he had said this, Jesus he was called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord again this morning. We're talking about the miracle of the century. The miracle of the century. We're going to talk on around three points as the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. We're going to talk about the pause of the miracle, the perspective of the miracle. And we're going to talk about the power of the miracle. And we want Christians to know this morning that Christians should believe in God. B-I-G, believe in God. Christians should believe in God. We're going to look at this brief uh, video and then we'll get into the Word.
Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was the cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Mm-hmm. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen, and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Praise the Lord. The miracle of the century, undoubtedly, the miracle of the century. Before we get into uh, the message this morning, like I said, we have a guest this morning, and I have him waiting back in the office there. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bible doesn't say, we're going to use maps as we've been studying from the uh, loyalty month. Uh, mm-hmm. so we've studied how to live by the book, so... Yeah. Yeah. We're going to use maps again this morning. and But the Bible doesn't say where Jesus was when he heard that Lazarus was sick. Mm-hmm. But it did say that it, he waited two days, and by the time he got to where Lazarus was, uh, um, uh, it was four solid days. Right. Four solid days. So I want to make the assumption. All right. Listen to Wednesday night. Uh, we just shared about how Jesus made Capernaum up here his home base. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. He had moved from Nazareth, which is right here, because they rejected his ministry. Mm-hmm. And theologians tell us that he spent about 20 months. And if you know about his ministry, it was only three years. So right, right. out of the three years, the theologians believe that he set up his home base at Capernaum, right there. Right, right. right there on the Sea of Galilee mm-hmm. for, for, for 20 months. Mm-hmm. And as we follow him, uh, we know that he not only did his miracles there in Galilee, mm-hmm. but he did some miracles down in Jerusalem, okay? Right. Yeah. And, uh, and and one of the things I and why I make this assertion that where Jesus was when he heard Lazarus was sick was that theologians tell us that this trip, as you see this dark line from down here right. to Capernaum all the way down here to Jerusalem, mm-hmm. would take a four days journey. Well, tell them something about it. Yes, sir. All right. It took four days. They said these grown men were walking about mm-hmm. 20 miles a day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it take me 40. <laughs> 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 Might take me 10 days. Tell right. somebody. Yeah. But you got to remember, this was a walking culture. That's right, sir. That's right. Yeah. He- hello, somebody. Right. The only somebody I can think of in our culture that could maybe be kind of the same as like in New York. They say they walk in New York all the time. They walk. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, so so it would take uh oh and, and these when you were grown men it would take you longer if you had children. So we know they were mostly grown men, so they would they would cover about twenty miles a day. So it would take him uh, oh about four days to get from where I believe he heard in Capernaum where his home base is to get down here to uh, Oh, Bethany, where Lazarus was. Right. They said Bethany was about two miles from Jerusalem. Mm. All right. So naturally, you see why he would make his home base, it seemed like, in Bethany when he came down. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
He, 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 would, he would visit there. They had the gift of hospitality. They would, yes, he would did. visit there. And, and, and he felt very comfortable. Uh, uh, and, and they knew that Jesus loved Lazarus when he was sick because it said in the text, if you study that Jesus loved, and they came from that same uh, Greek word, or it's a derivative of that Greek word, agape. So he loved him. Hello, somebody. And that's why they can send word. They knew he had the power to hear him, so they sent word. Oh, and I believe, like I said, they was up in Capernaum. Mm -hmm. Take a four days journey to get all the way down here to where Lazarus was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you give me the moment. Give me a moment. I want to break out our guests. If you and give me a moment to guess, and uh, I want y'all to bear with him. Mm -hmm. uh, talk amongst yourselves. I got a guest in here. Eliezer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Pastor Eton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eliezer, are you ready to come out? Pastor yeah. Eton, I'm ready to come out, but I'm a little nervous because I'm not really a creature. Well, Eliezer, you don't have to, uh, you know, think of yourself as a preacher. All right. you got to do is just to give your testimony right. and testify right. about what the Lord had done for you. So you don't really have to be a preacher. All I want you to do is to tell your testimony. I mean, right. you got an awesome testimony. Not everybody yeah. has that kind of testimony. Uh, so would you just come out and allow the Lord to use you, be at peace? Uh, and at rest and uh, allow the Lord to use you this morning, Eliezer. Mm -hmm. Will you do that for the Lord? Yes, I will do it for the Lord because the Lord has been good to me and for me all of these years. So I will do this mm -hmm. for the Lord. Well, Eliezer, I'm going to stay back here. You you go out. I don't want to interrupt, but you know you 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 may be behind on that little technology, but just piss, push the button. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My name. Yeah. Eliezer. Y'all don't know my Hebrew name unless you study like Pastor Eton says you've been doing the last two months. All right. Yeah. Uh, but my Hebrew name is Eleazar, but you know it in Greek as Lazarus. All right. Yes. Yes, Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And my first name is Lazarus. Uh, my middle name is Com, and my last name is Four. Mm. Yes. Uh, now I know Pastor Eton is usually G'd up when he speaks, but he told me he wanted me to come in the grave clothes. Mm. Yes. All right. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like uh, what I was when I came out of ah, uh, came out of the grave. Yes, right, yes. right. Pastor Eton told me to pick this thing up and click the button. Okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said he is a point preacher, so I'm gonna try to point too. All right. Uh, yeah. Pause of the miracle. Mm -hmm. I got sick, you got to remember. Yeah. Right, right. And I'm going to tell you the truth, how I felt, I'm going to keep it real. Mm -hmm. I saw my sisters to send word mm -hmm. to Jesus. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. After I got sick, Oh, man, I knew by when I sent word to Jesus, because we were, we were we were friends, we were buddies, we were a spoon coon, as you, you, that you guys say. Mm -hmm. We right. were tighter than peas and carrots. Oh, well. <laughs> so I, I sent word, and, and, and I, I was sick, but I had no doubt, mm -hmm. no doubt. that Jesus would work it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't you know? Jesus didn't do what I thought he was going to do. Mm. All right. Yeah. Don't you know mm. that I sent word mm. and Jesus didn't come running and dropping everything? Yeah. 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 That's the time. I told me a story about 
his wife. And he said he hoped he don't be able to go home because his wife don't like to be in his sermons. <laughs> but the God I serve has a power, so I'm going to use that testimony. His wife's best friend, father had died. And they, they were supposed to have the funeral uh, a week ago. Mm -hmm. But his wife learned that the funeral was put off a week, but she didn't know anything about it. But don't you know when she found out the day before because it was her very best friend that she found a ticket the night before, drove down to Dallas, caught a plane to Houston, got picked up and made her best friend's dad's funeral. All right. Mm -hmm. Because that was her best, her, one of her best friends. She dropped everything. To go see about her. And that's what I thought Jesus would do for me. I thought Jesus, once he, once he, once he heard, once he heard that I was sick. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I thought Jesus would drop everything. Yes, yes. I know he was far away. Oh, I thought he would drop everything to come see about me. Or at the very least, just say the word. That I may be healed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard y'all studying about or oh, on Wednesday about that man that just took Jesus at his word and, 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 and healing took place. I thought Jesus would do that for me after all I'm his friend. Yeah. Can I keep it real with you this morning? All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. But what Jesus did for me, his friend, the one he loved, or the derivative of that Greek word, the the one he loved, what did he do for me? You see it up there on the screen. He stayed where he was for two more days. Yeah, yeah. He stayed where he was for two more days. That's why Pastor Eton has the pause of the miracle on the screen. I thought he would drop everything to come see about me. And somebody's listening at the sound of my voice. You're in trouble. You're sick. You're dying. And you thought that God would drop everything to come see about you. You didn't expect oh, to have to be laid off. You didn't expect to have to be in the hospital. Oh, for five oh, days. You believe that you are a friend of God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to carry the struggle with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We know the end of my story. Yeah. Hopefully I'm trying to give you hope for the end of your story. Today is not a denial. You may feel forgotten. You may feel forsaken at times in your life because you are a friend of God. You don't play church. You are church. You are a friend of God. But God hasn't moved on your timetable. He's moving on his own timetable. And he has pause, put, pushed the pause button in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. It don't ever feel good when God pushes that pause button. But again, Habakkuk uh, tells us uh, something that, that can help us in the middle of the pauses of life for the vision is yet for the appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarries wait for it though it tarries uh, wait for it and if you have to die like I died die in faith mm. alright Amen. in Jesus name Die in faith. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. And it what? <coughs> now tarry. Wait on the Lord. Oh, in those times you feel forsaken. Wait on the Lord. When you got put in God's waiting room. Oh, wait on the Lord. A delay is not a denial. Jesus' name, 
and I'm just trying to keep it real with you. In this Christian walk in life, many times, in the pause of life, you may begin to feel like you are mm -hmm. forsaken. Mm -hmm. All right. Like I said, if you have to die, you better die in faith. Because it's that thing that will wake you up. In Jesus' name. Now let me tell you this. This next point Pastor Eton has up here. <laughs> it really kind of caught me wrong when I first heard it. I'm sick. I sent word. And now Jesus says that I am glad that I was not there. Mm. Jesus is saying, I'm sick. I'm about to die. I said, oh, I sent word to my friend that I spent time in my house. We had sweet fellowship. Oh, I spent time. I sent word. And now I see or hear that he was glad that he wasn't there. Yes. Tell you, I, I, I took this the wrong way when I when I found out about it. <laughs> so you're saying, Jesus, I'm sick in my body. You're glad you're not there. I'm, I'm, I've been accused of crimes that I I didn't commit. You're glad that I'm that, that, that you're not there. I, I've been laid off. And you're, you're glad that you're not there, Jesus. Oh, I'm hungry. And you're glad that I'm not there. My, my marriage is falling apart. And you're glad that you're not there. What means this, Jesus? Yeah, all right. Perspective of the miracle is what it means. means God may be doing something that is above your reasoning or your understanding. The word says that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are, are not our ways. And now, oh, we're, we're taking a look at a little insight in his ways in regards to my life. Now I'm dead. All right. Yes, sir. And he's glad that he wasn't not there. Mm -hmm. See, preacher, I can relate to life because this, this situation is dead. Mm. My marriage is dead. My hope is dead. Uh, oh, everything I wanted, everything I thought I could have, all my dreams, uh, all of my desires uh, are dead now. Oh, Jesus, way too late. Now, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. I'm dead. Somebody's feeling dead this morning. Remember what I said in that first point of the pause? If you must die, you better die with belief. You better die. I'm dead in Jesus. I was glad that he, that he didn't make it on time. John 20 and 31 says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Remember his perspective on things. He's the <coughs> Messiah. He, he's God. He's, he's got a point to prove about your life and about my life. He has a point to prove uh, and, and, what, and he's about to prove something in my life. Uh, but, but, but Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Oh, that by believing you may have life in his name. So I believe that God uh, oh, could help me and I died in that belief. But don't you know that wasn't the end of the story? Jesus was glad that he wasn't there all oh, to save me because he was about to do what Pastor Eton Corns 
from miracle of the century right. when everything from that point on would change. It was a miracle of the century. And by the time he made it from Capernaum all down to oh, Bethany, two miles outside of Jerusalem. Yes, I was dead. I was dead as a doorknob. No doubt that I was dead. We, we had a belief amongst the Jews is that when a person died, that three days the spirit lingers. That's right. And, 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 and had Jesus come early, they would have accused me of not being dead. All right, go ahead. Y'all heard of how commas? Mm -hmm. Right. Back then, we didn't have any machines. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard of weights? <laughs> Back then, that's, that's the reason why people had weights. They didn't have machines to see. Oh, well, the people were still alive when they died. So they would sit and they would wait. And, and, and those who were in a coma and who didn't die would wake up. So, so, so that could have been that belief. But after that third day, all hope for everybody was gone. Right. Yeah. Including me. I was dead as a doorknob. There was no hope at all in the eyes of the Jews, in the eyes of my true sisters who believed that if Jesus would have made it there in time, that I wouldn't have died. They believed that. One of my sisters believed that I would be raised again. But, oh, but when the trumpet sound, oh, but me, my sister, the Jews didn't know, oh, what sort of man this was. Hello, uh, Pastor Ethan told me about a message Pastor Gaines preached uh, at the 11 o'clock service uh, when he spoke uh, oh, to the Psalms. Uh, oh, and they saw him rebuke the Psalms and they posed the question, what matter of man is this? Uh, yeah, oh, these people did not know the matter of man Jesus was. All right, amen. Because Jesus would show up on the scene. I, I, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. they, they expected, oh, a, a, a bad smell. Mm -hmm. That's how dead I was. They didn't even want to open the door because of the smell. That's how hopeless everybody saw my situation. It was hopeless. Nobody believed. But Jesus wanted to teach everybody a lesson. And even you today, that you can be in the midst of the darkest time of your life. You can be in the midst of no hope at all. But you better know the man of man that you serve. You better know the man of God that you have. And if you truly know the man of man and the man of God that you serve, you can realize that there is nothing impossible for our God in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing. Amen. What he's doing, he's trying to work belief out in your life. Trying to work belief out in your life. Mm -hmm. And now here comes the power. <laughs> I have a testimony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a testimony. I was dead. I was, I was somewhere in the darkness. I don't have any memories mm -hmm. of what went on. All I know is I lost consciousness. I did not know how long I've been dead. I, I did not know how long I had I've been in the grave, but I lied in the grave. I lied in the grave. And as I was lying in some of these dead clothes, I heard the voice of Jesus in the midst of my darkness, in the midst of my sorrow, in the midst of my hopeless situation. I heard that voice that I had in my living room. Everybody. 
right now, before I extend this invitation, mm -hmm. our eyes are closed and heads are bowed. Yes, 
Father God, we come right now, Lord, thanking you and praising you, Father. Praise you, Father. For you are God. The same God that oh stepped out of nowhere and spoke everything into existence. Ex nihilo. Oh, the same God that don't need anything to manifest everything. Oh, it's the same God that we serve today. And there's somebody here in a hopeless situation. There's somebody here in a dead situation. There's somebody here that's been depressed. Somebody here, oh, that has been going through it all night long and believes that if they could just make it to the house this morning, if they could just make it. Oh, and today, oh, you said be big. B-I-G, help us all to be big when we leave this place, to believe in God in every situation. And if we must die, help us to die in faith, to die believing, so that one day we may hear the voice of Jesus say, come forth in Jesus' name. Encourage our hearts, minds, and soul in Christ Jesus through this testimony yes. of Eliezer, uh, of Lazarus. Right. Thank you, Father, for all Thank that you, you yes. have done this morning. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. All eyes are still closed, heads about Saint Supreme right now. There's somebody listening at the sound of my voice, and you are dead. All right. You have breath, you have sight, but you're not in a personal relationship with God. That is death to not be in a personal relationship with God. But today you can be raised from the dead. By doing what Jesus said, that, that was the king of Lazarus. Lazarus simply did what Jesus said. And the Bible says of Jesus, God so loved the world that he gave his holy begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And if you can, oh, be big today. In God, believe in Jesus Christ today. You can be saved. Yes, yes. Is there one today? Step out of your seat. And is there one today that want to give their life to Jesus Christ? Is there one? Is there one? All you have to do is pray this simple but profound prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. For I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you were buried and raised again on the third day. And because I believe big today, I believe that I can come into a personal relationship with God. In Jesus' name. Amen. All eyes still closed, heads are still bowed. Is there one who prayed that prayer for the first time? Step out of your seat. We are out of time, but we can take this time to accept you into the body of Christ. Amen. Is there one? Step out of your seat right now. I know in times like these and days like these, most who show up are saved. But just in case, I want to give you this opportunity to come forth right now in Jesus' name. Is that one? Hey Amen and praise the Lord with you all. Please stand as I give the benediction. I want to thank you for being in the household of the Lord this morning. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We do glorify your holy name. You're truly worthy to be praised, Father. We glory in you today. Yes. Father, as we leave this place, put your hand to protection around us. Yes. Keep us safe from our harm and danger.
until we meet again. And the people of God said, Oh. Hug your neighbor and say, Neighbor, be big this week. Be big this week. Amen. Praise the Lord.